Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode here on Six and Bones with your ghost host, Chelsea and Ten. Hi, Ten. How are you? I am doing good. I am excited uh, for a long weekend this weekend for myself. I'm traveling. One of my friends is turning 30 and his wife is turning 29. Ooh. So going to go see them at Lindsay, the house bear gal. Oh my so. God. No, we need, do you have a house spirit update on that? Did you ever tell the people of the no. house spirit update? Did I ever tell the people? I think I did that. We'll have to she, see if there's like another one. I'm going to definitely sit down with Lindsay and, you know, ask her what's going on. I'll also sit down with Brian and his dad was a security guard at our college that we went to. So he, uh, he's seen a thing or two, um, cause our college is over 200 years old. So, uh, shit spooky over there, but you know, I'm excited. We're stopping at Salem on the way home. I love that. Before like the crowds bum rush it to mm-hmm. uh for Halloween. So very excited for that. Oh my gosh. Garden update. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, what's your garden update? I was gonna say I have one too. I have a horrifying update. Oh no, 10, <laughs> please, not the plants. While I am getting, you know, produce still and everything. I was checking on my good old uh, pumpkin plant because, you know, we're we're almost to Halloween. We are underneath Aww. 100 days now. Now, he's doing fine. He's doing fine. I went to go check and I was, you know, pruning the leaves, making sure like everything's golden, just removing kind of like dead flowers and everything. And I flip it over because it's on my roof deck. So it's like on top of like fake grass and like uh, wood deck kind of material. Mm-hmm. So I just want to make sure like there's no rot or anything. So because it's not standing up and I flip this bitch over. And in one of a thing, it like has a hole. And I was like, oh shit, are like bugs getting to this or like aphid? I don't know what gets. Yeah, right. Do I have an infestation of like weird bugs or like a fungus or something? Like the amount of stuff I've read on plants is insane. And I was like, shit, am I going to have to like cut all of this off? And I look in there and there's movement. Chelsea, there was movement. No, 10. No. And Kevin was on the roof with me and I was like screaming. And I pull out this larva that looks like it should be in a jungle. Like I was screaming as I'm pulling it out, like cursing everything it came from, beetles fornicating and everything. And I was just like, why is there a larva in my pumpkin pipeline? I I know we don't have a video component, but I wish people could see my face because I just know the woman was too stunned to speak because the one thing I hate about gardening is the insects that come with it because I hate bugs. I understand they have a purpose, but like when they're eating my plants, you know, like this has just been the war on Ted and Chelsea's garden. (laughs) Like truly, I wanted to, I looked at the larva before I killed it and I was like, what was the Listen, like so your pumpkin's dead no he's doing okay like i keep going up every day every morning to water and like do like first aid on him and be <laughs> oh, like no. are you okay like because like how hollow like pumpkin vines are yes yeah. it's, it's okay they're kind of similar to like squash and zucchini like the long tubes and everything so i'm like why was somebody taking a precedence in you <laughs> I don't know. It's so gross. And like, it's the one thing I really dislike about gardening. Like I said, I'm not a gardening girl. This is my first real crack at it this year. I've always done tomatoes, even when I lived with my parents, but like, I, you know, I tried it into zucchini this year. So like, here she goes. (laughs) I'm really trying, but it is really hard and it's time consuming. I'm out there every day, like clipping dead leaves so that like the, my plant gets more water where it needs to. And like, I'm always trimming down my basil and like, I don't even have an actual garden like you wouldn't have in a backyard. It's on my balcony and I'm still complaining. And I'm like, this is tough. This is a lot of work. And I just uh, horrified and I, I can't wait for like fall and winter when the bugs go back to hell where they belong. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'll be in the dirt as an archeologist and shit. And like, I'm not like too, prim and proper to be like uh, a bug but like when there's a fucking like grub worm in my pumpkin plant no that's disgusting get god on the phone like i'm done yeah have you thought about getting like an organic like pesticide or something to keep them away i need to i don't i don't know what attracts larva or like what what would have laid something like that what was oh, that like i don't know you have to look it up like i said i've been using neem nim or neem oil um it my plants are so much better they're rehabilitated from the beetle infest plague i had um and i was like chopping off the leaves and everything and like my marigolds are perfect like there was a beetle there yesterday but it's not like it was where there was like 10 of them on my plant 
And they were like trying to kill my marigolds that I dedicate to my ancestors. And I was like, how dare you dishonor the ancestors? Dishonor on you? Dishonor on your cow? Literally. You're just out. We're just out here fighting the plagues of Egypt, man. (laughs) We are. But, you know, for people that actually have garden gardens, like I'm talking like literally in your backyard, I I now feel your pain. Um, But I think it must get easier as you do it over and over again. You kind of like pick up tricks of the trade and how to like prevent these things from happening. Um, so yeah, my, my garden's actually thriving. A little garden update for me. We're, we're, we're good over here. We're, we're good. Fun. I got like uh, some flowers. I think I'm going to have some zucchini soon. So I'm super excited, but yeah, <gasps> we're good. We're rolling. <laughs> we're rolling. Um, no fornication, nothing. No, I have nothing, no movement, no nothing because I've been out there with my organic pesticides, just spraying every away, week. just spraying away. Cause you got to protect your plants. And that's what I, I got. I get that now. I understand. <laughs> But, but um, how else are you? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm going to see the Haunted Mansion premiere tomorrow because, you know, I am a spooky ghost host. I know if you were going to be around, like if you weren't like getting ready to go, like we would have gone together. Um, But I was like, I am so excited. Um, I just love sitting in the movie theater and like getting served food like they make yes. it fancy these days. So, yeah, going to go see Haunted Mansion. And then this weekend, um. You know, I think I'm just going to relax, hang out, have a good time. I really want to go. There's like a a farm by me. It's like pick your own like strawberries and blueberries. So I might go and like do that during the day. And yeah, I've been okay. Just, you know, I'm having a rough week. Ten and I had to take off from the metaphysical store. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, we had some things personally that transpired. So like That's if life. we're not like super <laughs> visible on the internet these days, it's just, you know, your girl's really been going through it. Going through it, trying to prep for Sawin. Just, yeah. just, just two girls. <laughs> just two girls. But, you know, we weren't even going to podcast this week. And then Ted and I have just been feeling so like meh that yeah. we both were like, I'm quitting the store this week. Not actually quitting, but we're not yeah. doing the store. And I'm literally not doing the podcast because I need a break. And today we woke up and we're like, no, I'm getting back on the horse. <laughs> We have to, we have to just keep going and keep persevering. So, um, our podcast episode today is just going to be like a hodgepodge of things. And we really wanted to do some like hot takes, like our own personal hot takes, and then maybe some spiritual or archeological ones. And then we also obviously have a spooky ghost host story, the ghost host hotline. Um, everyone (laughs) thought the last episode was so scary. I've gotten a few reactions to it. Um, people being like, that's absolutely terrifying. And like, I've had something similar. So, you know, it was that story last week was a little, little treacherous. It, it was a spooky, like, oh. but I'm excited for this one. Cause it's, it kind of goes into some hot takes and everything. So where do you want to start Charles? I, I want to start with like some personal hot takes first. You have like, before I get into like my spiritual hot takes, yes. I feel like I want the people to know more about me and yes. this might change your opinion about me and not for the better. So I'm going to give you a hot take. So this is something that people like literally cannot believe about me, but I absolutely hate seafood. I, I there's no kind of seafood that I would eat. Um, it's unfortunate mm-hmm. because I know it's really healthy for you. And like, I really want it for a long time to try the Mediterranean diet, um, not diet, but like change my diet to be more like, you know, they say it's one of the healthiest to have because the fruits, the vegetables, the fish. Yeah. I think it's the texture of seafood that, you know, I've heard like when people like cut out like a whole kind of area of just like food, whatever outside of like a dietary restriction, like it's usually texture oriented. Yes. And it's unfortunate because like my family, they eat a ton of seafood, like being Italian and yeah. especially during the summer, you know, and I always feel so bad because anytime we go to a restaurant in the summer, like people are always like, oh, can Chelsea eat here? Do they have chicken? Because we- they like to go to seafood houses and I'm going on my cousin's bachelorette trip in Rhode Island. And like, they had to send me restaurant options, which I felt bad because like it's a seafood town. And my cousin was like, we know you don't eat seafood. (laughs) Which one of these looks better? Like they have certain, they have other things besides seafood, but like, which one do you prefer? We don't care. And I'm like, wow, this should not be about me, but thank you for the consideration. (laughs) No, like it's not too shocking to me one. Cause I know you, but like outside of that, like my brother-in-law also like just does not like seafood and he is in the coast guard. So like, oh wow. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> interesting I know it kind of sucks I mean I will say the only thing I do like is like cheesy crab dip because you can't really taste crab like I'll eat it you know like okay 
But anything else, I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Like, I won't even try. My mom, every time we have shrimp, just try the shrimp. I'm like, mom, you've been saying this since I'm like born. I don't like shrimp. I don't care if you get it from the best place on earth. I don't care if you catch it yourself. I'm not interested in your shrimp. <laughs> I'm not interested in it. Get it out of here. Oh my no, God. It even extends to sushi. Like, I am that girl that orders vegetable sushi because I can't do it. Okay. Even like... It's probably still a texture thing, but like the imitation crab. I think that's worse. Like I honestly cannot with imitation crab. Like I'm like, why would you, why wouldn't you just get the real crab? Why are we eating imitation? You know what I mean? It just, it never made any sense to me. And I know the California roll is one of the most popular rolls, but I'm not trying to like freak anybody out, but it's like, it kind of makes it worse in my brain of like, well, then what the hell is it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, so absolutely. I had to, I had to start off with that hot take. Um, <laughs> do you have a personal hot take or do you have another hot take you want to go into? <laughs> I do. Cause I was actually on the phone with my mom earlier, yeah. um, earlier this week. And we were just talking about like nonsense. And I was like, you know, like Kevin and I are going to be traveling like in a plane soon. So I was like, you know what? I'm not ready for it. And here's my fucking hot take. I fucking hate when people lose all iq when they walk <laughs> through those sliding doors in the airport i we talked they, about this yes <laughs> they just the doors open and they lose all sense of common sense like it's like they've yes. never seen a plane before it's like we're back in the 1800s and they're like what's this incredible space bus doing here <laughs> no i <laughs> oh we gonna get to get this that. new foreign place like <laughs> I totally get that. And like, that's why I'm a certain type of traveler. And Ted and I have talked about this and let us know what kind of traveler you are. If you travel often, I am the girl that has to get to the airport two to three hours before plane time, because if I'm flying <laughs> international, okay, I need to be there. I need to have my ass in a seat somewhere. I don't care if I'm, I'm early. Yeah. I will peruse the airport, get a coffee. I know I've got through security and I'm getting on a plane. I've had friends that are like, oh, we'll just leave an hour before. And I'm like, absolutely not. My anxiety cannot handle this. How are you getting on this plane? Like, I know, like, and it, it's bamboozling from start to finish to me because like a lot of people have traveled and I'm not saying like everybody has to be going international, but most of us, a good amount of people have been on a plane and it's not only like once you go through like the doors, it's like going through TSA. Like, granted, I know things were different pre 9 11. Trust yeah. me. I, growing up in San Diego, we used to go to Mexico and all we needed was a birth certificate. Yeah. You just would get on the plane. Like, no, no, quite. My parents said that I didn't travel pre 9 11. I think I was too young. I was like in second grade and we didn't travel often. Mm -hmm. But my parents were like, we would just board a plane and just that was it. You literally could walk in and like, you could literally like, if like Chelsea was going on a flight or something, like I would be able to like walk basically to her seat with her yes, and yes. Say, ta -ta, and hang and then like be like, oh, we're gonna pull away, ma'am. You're not here. And it's like, you're right, I gotta go. Like that was what it was like. And it's just like, guys, that was over 20 years ago. Like things have changed. Like, yeah, <laughs> take your shoes off. You know, I know in certain the shoes, the shoes of it all, these yeah. people in line in front of me, I I'm a girl. I, if I'm not in flip-flops, I already have my shoes off in my hand. I have my laptop easily We're accessible. Ready to go. Ready to go. These people in front of me, around me, behind me are like, do I take my pants off? Can <laughs> I, can I bring soup into I the, know, I can know. I use a fishing license? <laughs> instead of my own ID like I know I totally get it and like it kind of really depends on the airport and I fly out of New Jersey EWR all the time Newark it's very strict it's an international airport they're mean in there you know that they're gonna scream at you get your laptop out of your bag and I get it I, I'm very aware and yes. like then you'll go to other airports and they're like oh you have your shoes on no big deal so I get sometimes people don't know but it's like there's you hear them yelling these things <laughs> get it ready and get it together you know like, I get I it know traveling is oh. is I know Weird. for a good amount of airports, that is standard. Like, granted, the airport on Santorini is probably about as big as my, like, downstairs, like, my first floor. Yeah. And, like, there are people outside in a line wrapping around the airport trying to board the plane. So you would go through security, luggage check everything in a line, and then board your plane right there. I'm like, okay, there's a few outliers like that sure but like for the most part everybody get it together like you've had so much time to learn the changes i know i know it is get really it funny. together 
And maybe that's like a, a weird thing to say. Cause I know I travel, I travel at least two to three times a year. So I used to travel more often, especially when I was younger. Like I would just like hop on a plane with no responsibilities and no nothing. Like, I don't care if I had 10 cents in my bank account, I'd make it work. Yep. Um, but yeah, it is kind of weird. And I'm a very specific type of traveler. So I know like if you don't travel, like I travel, I'll just meet you there. I'll meet you at the gate. You know, like that's just the way that yeah. it is for me. Yeah. I hundred percent meet you at the gate. No problem. No anxiety, no stress. I got to get there two to three hours early. That's my brain. So anyway, um, I kind of want to move into like a spiritual hot take now. Yeah. Let's go like semi-spiritual, you know, semi-spiritual. Okay. So, um, I've been posting a lot about like spirit communication. Cause you guys know, this is like my bread and butter. It's my favorite thing to talk about. Literally it's like, Chelsea, what else can you possibly say about spirit communication? You talk about it every day. Um, <laughs> when people tell me that like I'm doing spirit communication wrong because I've encountered darker negative entities and there's only high vibrational beings that I should be (laughs) hanging out with and not hanging out with lower vibrational beings. And there's two different things here. Okay. I hate to break it to everybody, but when you're doing spirit communication, you could talk to anything out there, pick up a Ouija board. You hear those Ouija board stories. Not everything is good. And I've said this before. And how do I know? I've experienced it. I've said it 50,000 times every episode. So whatever. But this notion of like high vibration versus low vibration is such a weird concept to me because it's kind of rooted in new age, good and evil kind of sense Mm -hmm. of like, these are only high vibrational things we can do. And you can't do these low vibrational activities because it's low vibrations. And it's so weird and not everything is black and white and yes. people extend it into like I saw something with water where people Food. in California are only drinking high vibrational water I'm like not everyone has access to your $80 water okay I'm drinking the city gin out of my faucet you're gonna tell me I'm low vibrational like maybe I am <laughs> I have a Brita like leave me alone so it's like um Oof, I've seen that like with food yeah. too. And like had a doctor tell me that one time. And I was like, first, how did you get your degree? I have some questions. But damn, like and I like there's so much damage that can do. Like it's it's re- not a good take. It's not a good take. Like it's not a hill to die on. Um no. You know, well, like not things are not high vibrational and low vibrational. And like, I'll use Archangel Michael, St. Michael as an example, where you think okay. he's like an, an angel, right? So he's high yeah. vibrational in that sense. Yeah. But let me tell you something. St. Michael has taught me to defend myself against negative entities. Like that's one of the things I've learned with him. Mm-hmm. He's doesn't think things are high vibrational. Like that's like a weird concept of like, there's nothing that can be in between. And it's super harmful to use those terms. Yeah. You know, there's no one is better than another. And just because like, there's a being that is considered darker, it doesn't mean that it's low vibrational. It's also like darker to who? Lighter to who? Who are we using as our base source? Like, is it darker than a kitty cat? Is it lighter than a kitty cat? Like, what is our base of operations? And like, where is that coming from? Like, I think of Pazuzu, the god Pazuzu, the Mesopotamian god comes to my mind where he literally is an born from evil almost but he is a protector of women and children and it's like so where do you put him on your scale yeah they were calling upon him for protection yeah against evil so it's like and you should look him up if you don't know who he is like he absolutely looks wild his iconography mm-hmm. and maybe one time t- one day ted and i will dive into mesopotamia but it's like i think we need to start thinking about things in a broader scale of not just like things are just not so black and white in spirituality and in life of like cheese is low vibrational because it can cause lactose intolerance. You know, like that's the kind of things that I see. And it's like, what? Hey, I got a crazy story about lactose, about lactose intolerance. So Kevin growing up, bless his little soul growing up, he thought it was lactose and tolerant. Oh no! He was like, "What's the issue, (laughs) Kevin? Not Kevin. Don't do us like that, Kevin. Kevin. No, but you know, like, well, it was like what I said today between tomb and tome. I was like a tome of information. No, I said a. I was like, I'm like a tomb of information about Hikate because if you go on my profile, it's just 42 videos of her. (laughs) She has me working overtime over here, and Ten was like, "Do you mean tome?" And I'm like, "Do I?" 
what is it? What is that? <laughs> and I was like, Chelsea, yeah. it's okay. I spelled went with an H through seventh grade. So, you know. I used to have this friend. I've told Tom this story in college. Okay. <laughs> through college. No, this is like a crazy thing. <laughs> she would call a hamburger a hangaburger. And like in college, in college, right? And I was just, she'd be like, oh, I'm going to get the hangaburger. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't hear you because you're laughing so hard. <laughs> and for for people outside of the U.S., for the U.S., our college ages are like 18 to 22. Yes, yes. So <laughs> you're older adult, you know what I mean? And like, that's a wild thing to say, right? Like, you think you would know the difference by now. And I didn't, like, she kept saying it to me. We would go to like the cafe and they had like hamburgers because you're college kids, you're eating out late at night. And yeah. she's like, I'll have the hangaburger. And every single time, and I was like, I thought she was joking. So- And I was like making a new friend and eventually we became friends. And I was like, Hey, I have a question. I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but like, why do you call it a hangaburger? And she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, (laughs) Oh no. Oh no. Like I've opened up something I shouldn't have, but I was curious. I was like, maybe she's trying to be funny. Like, I don't know. I didn't make me think differently of her. I was just like, question mark. What is this about? And she had no idea she had been saying it that way. And no one ever told her. Cause I was like hamburger. She's like, yeah, I say hamburger. And she was dead serious. Like I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. Like we went on to be best friends after this conversation. I swear to God, <laughs> but she was like, no one ever told me. And I'm like, we are 18 years old. No one ever told you you were saying it wrong. And she was like, nope. Ooh. Yeah. I, I swear on my life. This was a real conversation I had. And she was like, thank you so much for telling me. Oh my God. Yeah. That I know. Was like- that was like when I blew my one of my really uh good like one of my best friends minds after college um I met her in college and we swam together and everything and when she realized that she was saying my name wrong like throughout college and post college mm-hmm. and her world came fucking crashing down well your name is kind of hard to be honest with you so yeah no it is so I and I mean, growing up, getting a substitute was always like, how's this going to go when they see my fucking long ass name on that attendance sheet? So like, here we go. Yeah, you I- have an interesting, does your name mean anything actually? Or is it just like what it, I'm, I, I'm asking you live on the podcast because believe it or not, I've never asked Ten this question about her name because it is like a not a normal, like, yes, not that it's like a weird name, but it's just like something that's, that's just weird. not like a, well, it's not like nor- like a normal name that you would hear on the street. Oh yeah, I mean, growing growing up, growing up, <laughs> growing up, I uh, I grew up. Didn't <laughs> I grew up? I grew up. Everybody, <laughs> growing up, I actually hated my name because I wanted to be like a Nicole, a Kendra, like yeah, something like a Brittany, like a Sandra, like, like something fun, funky, perky, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you will. Yeah, and I was stuck with Tenninger, and yeah. like Tenninger Kellenbarger, and like kindergarten was rough. But yeah. man, oh man, did I go into kindergarten knowing everything and only needing to learn X, Y, and Z because yeah. holy shit. But um, my mom actually loved the name Tanager, which is the name of a bird. And it's like Aww. this little, like, it's in the Finch family, I think. And okay. there is a summer Tanager that is uh, bright yellow and yellow is my mom's favorite color. So she was playing around with it because the bird is spelled t-a-n-a-g-e-r and my mom was like okay like that's that's interesting but like let's play around with it so then my mom kept doing that until she came up with tenninger and then from that she did my middle name and it was the reverse for my sister they picked her middle name first before they did tara so so your mom just said i'm just gonna freestyle it yeah freestyle and her name she she liked the bird and the color and then was like okay what's gonna go with tenninger so all of that fun stuff but That's yeah so it's cute. just a little bird I didn't know that yeah my mom when I asked her about my name because it's actually English Chelsea it actually means port um and it's also I think it's a football team which soccer soccer if you're in the U.S. it's a football very famous football team um I was like why did you pick my name and she was like oh I saw some girl in a movie and I loved her name and I was born in the 90s and not not to get like political, but everyone thought I was named after Chelsea Clinton. I was born in 92. Oh. Bill Clinton was president and like, you know, the whole Monica Lewinsky situation. So you can imagine like growing up, people are like, so you're named after Chelsea Clinton. And I'm like, absolutely, I am not. Um, I don't know who I'm named after. Actually, my mom just likes this name. Could I have told you 
that that was the name of Bill Clinton's daughter now. Like given a hundred choices. Only boomers know that. <laughs> given a hundred choices, chances, I would be like, I don't know. We wouldn't know that. And I only know that because when I worked in a grocery store and my name tag was Chelsea, like the older people would be like, oh, you're named after Chelsea Clinton. And I'm like, I'm absolutely not named after any political person. Thank you. Um, I don't know who I'm named after actually, but I got that like my whole life. And my mom, like, she was like, it was so annoying. <laughs> like growing up, it was just annoying. She's like, I didn't, regardless of like the political party that it was, she just like, yeah. I would never name my daughter after a politician. Yeah, no. <laughs> no matter who they are, right? Like whatever, they yeah. all garbage. But um, what is your, do you have like a spiritual hot take or? I have like a semi-spiritual that's like, okay, not like too crazy. Like we go like personal airport, mid, like in between, and then you just go full send. Yeah. So my mid ground, because it's like history, archaeology, spiritual spirituality now with it is astrology oh yeah this is this is a smoking hot take you told me about this earlier and my my head almost fell off I literally got up on my soap stool whatever and I was like I need to get up here and I need to scream it from my rooftop and just sound like a creature in the night just I get it but like when you go online and you go everywhere you go into metaphysical stores you go and see bah, 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 bah. astrology is like this whole like aspect of like ancient mysticism and fluty flu and everything and like that's how it's like peddled as and because my course that I teach I do have to cover I do cover astrology and it's fascinating to look at the entire history of astrology and for anybody who wants to like take a fucking deep rabbit hole dive do it because astrology as it is today is not not how it was yeah right and like astrology was a thing for a few thousand years. Like, don't get me wrong, but it really didn't become a whole thing of like horoscopes and stuff like that until like the Hellenistic period. So like around Alexander the Great time period, it's like 333 BCE. And prior to that, like Babylon, Babylonia had really, you know, kind of been developing astrology, but that's not to say other cultures and societies weren't tracking the stars and planets mm -hmm. and using it for navigation and using it for travel. And, you know, when do we know when the harvest is and everything? But it was never like, I'm a Capricorn, I'm blah, blah, blah. It wasn't yeah. that with having certain divinities tied to certain aspects and everything really until like 300 BC. So everything past that like after that has developed into astrology of what it is today and it like is a hot take of me of like that's not astrology in my opinion of what it is today it should not be called astrology it should be called like cosmic cosmicology or something like I I get what you're saying I get what you're saying but don't you think astrology practices can you know kind of take on a new age modernized approach? it can it absolutely can and it, it has for the last 2,000 years but I think that the way it is today, and maybe it's like who I've seen just kind of like talking about it. Yeah, it yeah, forever, that has to do with it. Yes. It's very much just like this toxic aspect of like, well, I'm uh, um, I'm a Sagittarius and like I cannot stand like Taurus men or something. Like it's that kind of like using um astrological signs as an excuse. It's like Oh, sure. you're, you're, I'm a Leo. It's like, no, you're just a bitch. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually had someone one time, um, they asked me like what my sun sign was and I'm a cancer son. And mm -hmm. they literally told me that they didn't want to talk to me because I was a cancer son and they've had such bad experiences with just cancers. And I'm like, I understand that to a certain extent because I do believe, I do believe in astrology, but I believe you need to have the full birth chart to like mm -hmm. kind of get a bigger picture. But I don't think like my astrology is uh, an excuse for shitty behavior. Like yes. I'm not a shit person because I'm a cancer son. I'm a shit person because I'm a shit person. And I'm using that to manipulate people. Like, you know, oh, my bad, I'm just a cancer. So I'm going to be a toxic human being because people say that about cancers because they're emotional, whatever. Yeah. And I don't believe in that kind of astrology. I think it can give you insight into people. And trust me, when I used to date, I was the girl that was always asking the guys like their birth date and time, making them text their moms because I wanted the full picture. I want to know what's going on. And I would do that. I would map out all my friends. I would map out like their birth charts, the guys that they were talking to. And yeah, it can give you a lot of insight for sure. But it's not like it's an excuse for people's bad behavior. 
And that's what I'm like, my hot take is I hate that. I absolutely hate being like, well, like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I just cry all the time. Like, I'm such a Pisces, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't yell at me. I'm a Pisces. Like, shut up. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. I think astrology in that sense, like birth charts is great for prediction. Like I've actually been to a birth chart reader before and it was like, okay, well you have houses in this house. So like this can explain why you have these certain personality traits, but it wasn't like a, an excuse for being a shit person. It was like, okay. And here in this house is why you might have, you know, certain situations that come up in your life around this. And it was more of like a prediction tool than like a, it was like a reading of your life versus a reading of like, (laughs) <laughs> I'm toxic, you know? Yeah. I'm but, toxic, but here's my excuse card. <laughs> right. So I, I, I would agree with that. I don't think that's like a super hot take for me. Um, because like I said, I just don't like buy into that kind of astrology. I do resonate with like my signs and everything, but I don't make it like, it's not my personality trait in a sense. Yeah, no, it's, it's not. And <clears throat> that's not to say like the ancients were also doing that. I mean, propaganda is both good and bad in the roman world and you know as a capricorn augustus was out there being like yeah i am gonna conquer the world and make rome a massive empire and it's like yeah okay you guys were all doing that too but now we have people today you know peddling it differently and using it and blah 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 yeah what i think of is like the people that come up on like tiktok almost like the tarot readers that are like stop this is a sign that your ex is coming back it's kind of like it I mean, like that, that stuff really pisses me off. Like as someone who reads professionally, I'm like, oh my God, please do not panic people like this. And they get like millions of views because, oh. you know, I had like this conversation today, actually in a client reading where it's like people turn to spirituality in really dark times. And as a professional, you have to be able to acknowledge that. Like, obviously people are coming to you for readings, for guidance, because something yeah. is not right. Or, you know, you're not going to a reader <laughs> because everything in your life is perfect. You're going to someone because you seek guidance that you can't get in the physical. And I don't know. I just think like hot take, maybe, I guess it just, there needs to be some more like ethics around that of, you know, using people's like despair and like hard places in life for business gain almost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because a lot of it is like two, 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 your ex-boyfriend's coming back. Oh my God. You. Yeah. And no. it's like, mm, scroll past. Don't want him. You can have him. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't claim this. Actually. I don't claim it at all. This is low vibrational. Get out of my sight. <laughs> um, Comment to claim your energy. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. Um, I'm not into that, but yeah, I like, like I said, it's, you have to take that responsibility as a reader of like, you know, people are coming to me for guidance and I want to make sure I'm being sensitive to that situation. You know, I had some things come up about like, you know, I've done readings where people's like partners have been coming out as deceitful and they've literally asked me that. And I have to be navigate that in a way that's not harmful to people. Correct. No, you know? that's really that's really well said. Yeah. Um. All right. So I think that's it for hot takes. I think we should kind of tell <laughs> our evil eye story that we've had recently, and then we should go into our ghost host hotline story because Ted and I did kind of. I know we talk about the evil eye a lot. Like we are yeah. evil eye believers. We are evil eye girls. Like we are. Mm-hmm. We're speaking the good news about evil eye. But something funny happened to me lately. Where um, you guys know that I do a lot of dream prophecy where my ancestors like to commune with me. It's very big in my practice in my dreams. And like, so does the deities that I walk with, like they're very big on dream messages and that's just the way that it is. And it's one of the oldest forms of like communication that you could possibly think of probably since human beings were alive, like on earth. Right. Yeah. Um, we probably don't have documentation of that, but I would only imagine like, you know, the earliest humans were definitely dreaming and yeah. So I had a dream about one of Ted and I's friends. And this is why I'm saying like divination can be so weird and prophecies can be so vague. And like, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. I had a dream that she had an intruder coming into her home to Mm -hmm. like, and it just like ended. Like I just saw my friend sleeping in bed in her dark house and like someone just walking in that was like this not like super dangerous energy, but like this like unsettling type of energy. So I wake up in like the sweats in the middle of the night, because when I get these sorts of prophecies, it wakes me up because it's so real. I feel like it's happening to me. And so 
I was like, okay, Chelsea, let's think about this through. Cause I was about to call my friend and be like, did you lock your doors? Like what is going on? But I was like, this can't be like an actual intruder. I, I have to like sit and think on this because I don't think it's like what I think the dream is. Yeah. And so my friend was practicing without spiritual protection. And the dream was basically about like, you are practicing and reading and trying to do things because they're newer to spirituality and witchcraft and you are allowing things to come into your home. And it's not necessarily like a person. Yeah. It's just the energy. It's just the energy. But I'm saying like, this is why you have to be so careful because imagine if I would have called this person in the middle of the night 10 and told them this, they would have freaked out. Oh my God. They no, they a hundred percent would have. And I like, talked to 10 the next morning and I was like uh I have my own opinions on what this means but I'm curious about like what you think this is because as a third party how are you interpreting this right like before yeah. I go and tell said person because I have to what do you think about this and she was like yeah. I don't think it like what it exactly what it means you know yeah <laughs> there's nobody in a ski mask breaking in <laughs> yeah but like that's how it like looked almost but I was like no 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 like I kind of have to dig deeper yeah so that was an interesting thing. And then this said person was hanging out with me in 10 and their evil eye broke in front of us, literally yeah. in front of us, in front of us and was just like, huh, that's funny. Like it just broke and like was going to brush it off as like, la da da. Ah, yeah. just need a new keychain, whatever. And it was just like, um, the looks at Chelsea and I were giving each other a bombastic side eye. I was like, do not throw that out. And this person was like, oh, my evil eye just broke. And we were like, no, like, no, this is exactly why I had just told you about this dream, like two hours prior to this. And mm -hmm. now your evil eye just broke in both of our presence. No, like you better, like we gave this person so much stuff from our store. We were like, you, here's how you do this. Do this here. Take this. Like you need to do a protection working when you go home tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know Don't what I mean? lock your doors. <laughs> yeah. So when an evil eye breaks, you know, like it means something like obviously if you're swinging it around and like you know it, it'll use common sense but if it's just broken yeah oh my god that was like yesterday um Chelsea and I had just gotten off of like a phone call and Kevin came home and he literally like put his like keys like on our island like where he usually does and when I tell you like it literally sounded like an explosion when he like put the keys down and I, he was like, oh, like my evil eye broke. And I literally was like, boop, 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 boop. Chelsea, I know I just got off the phone with you 30 seconds ago, but like, um, you might want to take a look at this. I know. Cause no, like we had just hung up the phone, just yeah. hung up the phone and I was going to go make dinner. And all of a sudden she calls me back and I just see a broken evil eye. I'm like, what, what is this? Like, did it break? Like, is it part of our inventory that broke? Like, did, did you drop the evil eye keychains? Whatever. And she was like, no, this is Kevin's. And I'm like, oh shit. I was like, well, I'm too tired to do like an evil eye reading, but obviously if it just broke on its own, like, you know what that means? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because also like a lot of our stuff, like I've dropped on my own and been like, oh, it doesn't break. And then it was like, hmm, no, this thing like smashed and attacked. And I was just like, okay, well, well then. Don't know what the source of this was, but simply just going to do another protection working. Thanks, everybody. Beep, boop, bop. Thanks, Michael. Michael. <laughs> yeah, literally calling on St. Michael. But honestly, like, tip, if your evil eye breaks, don't throw it out. Use it in your protection working. Yep. It, it took the energy from that whoever that whoever broke it. So it's like, send that shit back. That, that shit's red hot and ready to go. So, yeah, use it. Yeah, that is... Um, that's really quick quality energy <laughs> well we'll expand on this on another day but a hot take for another hot take for me is not all energy is bad energy even if it's negative energy it's not bad you could still use it and we will talk about that another time maybe transmission yep um i think we were planning to kind of do that with the circusy episode we can maybe talk about a little bit of like energetic transmission but you know when you get to that point in your craft where you're like this is why i don't believe in high vibrational low vibrational because i will use someone's evil eye energy at me and transmute it into a money working yeah I'll transmute it for something that's beneficial to me. So, oh, hundred percent. And last kind of hot take of because I know we're getting into like the ghost host. So, like, what yeah. is like really like more spiritual than like evil eye is um star seeds. Oh, I wasn't sure if we were gonna go here today, but <laughs> I yes, star seeds. And I don't even necessarily think that's a hot take. I think that's just 
a caution of warning of yeah. do not fall into the alt-right pipeline of new age spirituality with the starseed bullshit yeah it only leads to bad things and neo-nazi propaganda yes. and anti-semitism and just i i implore anybody out there to further investigate um the meaning of it and look at the imagery because whew, it is no bueno <laughs> yeah it kind of ties into the high vibrational low vibrational yes. topic in a way because they all the ascension to the 5d like when people are like We're, you're so 3d it's like what are you saying i'm not a hologram i'm not a video game like you're not upgrading my graphics card like what are we talking about and these things are not actually rooted in anything it is new age propaganda that falls into an alt-right pipeline it's extremely anti-semitic to say those things yep. and this concept of a star seed ties in with the aryan race that Hitler was talking about. So we really need to be better. Like the reptilians and the, like it's all tied together into like these weird anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Yeah, it's gross and disgusting. So please, please, please don't fall into it. Um, I know it's gotten into like being not only anti-Semitic, but super like ableist and yes. everything else. So just be very wary. Um. There's a lot of information out there. There's plenty of articles talking about it, but um, a lot of the stuff that, you know, the Third Reich was interested in and like that sort of like mysticism and um, everything and like finding everything, it is still around today, just under a different name. So please, please, yes. please, I implore you, do your due diligence and please research because this is so harmful. No, it is. And like, to be honest with you, accountability stick, I never fell into like the star seed side of things. But when I first started my journey, um, I'll always be honest with you guys. Yeah. I did follow people that were like talking about the Galactic Federation and like star seed and like ascension and like higher vibrations. Right. I never practiced it. It was never part of my practice, but mm -hmm. I did have a stint where it was like, I was trying to figure out like what kind of spiritual practice that I wanted to. And like things get pushed to you on online based on your interests. And like, these are the things that come up. Right. Yeah. And I think it's more, more awareness now than it was back then when I was studying spirituality, but I did used to buy crystals from this one seller that was always about like star seeds and like Ascension. I never bought into, like, I never thought I was a star seed or like anything like that. And I never like spewed that propaganda, but looking back on it now, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so happy. I never, cause like, it's so easy to fall into those pipelines when you find creators that you love or people that have articles written about it or books. And like, yeah. you're not thinking about it, especially me. Who's like a white woman. Like I'm not, I was not constantly, I was not self-aware in that moment of like, and like that light language stuff. It's like, it's all I kind of tied that. in together. Um, yeah. and it's okay if like, you've made that mistake. Like ton of people fall down that pipeline in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Like and don't feel bad if you have, because like I was like teetering on the edge almost. Like I didn't. It mm -hmm. never resonated with me. But I did buy crystals from this one person that was like she masked it under Reiki almost, but it was like um she was like working with the Galactic Federation, you know. Oh my god. Yeah, crazy stuff. I ne like I said, I never fell into it, but it was like a weird a weird thing that was going on but i see it all the time on uh tiktok like i see the videos and i think there's a lot more awareness around it now yeah. but listen if you fell into it don't feel bad because like most it's if it's in front of your face you know you're not really thinking about it correct if it's not blatant like you know bad i feel like i feel like you know a lot of things with just being on the internet and everything like a lot of things are masked yes. under blinking lights. They're and good at it. They're very good at it. They are. And yeah. it's been this like, they're like anti-Semitism and like xenophobia and everything and ableism is masked under these buzzwords and under everything. And it's like, oh, so it, it makes sense that like people fall into it and fall victim to it because, you know, these people are good at spinning their like used car sign to be like, oh, look at all this good love and light nonsense it's like hmm let's break this down let's open this puppy up 
Oh yeah. I mean like, and I've even seen things where it's like depression is like low vibrational. It's because you're doing low vibrational things. And it's like, no, it's because we're human beings having a human experience and we all have our own mental health problems. Nobody is perfect. Okay. Some of us have chemical imbalances that were yeah. not our choice. Yeah. Um, sometimes you're just born out the womb or I don't know, trauma from life. Like things happen to you. Therefore you develop like these things and it's like normal. Like I have PTSD and depression so bad. It doesn't mean I'm a low vibrational person. It doesn't mean I can't practice my craft. It doesn't mean I, I'm like a weirdo. It just, I'm a human being having a human experience, but these people will convince you that you're like some sort of like higher being with higher knowledge and you're so special and you deserve a special crown because you look a certain way and you're special. And it's when you just like, look at it, you're like, what is this? But millions of people are like involved in it. No, it's so crazy. I've been waiting to talk. I mean, I feel like we should have just done a whole podcast episode on new age spirituality and their problem and its problems, but yeah, this is one of them. So I know we have a lot of new people that follow us and like people that are just starting. And like, if you've done this, listen, it's okay. Red hand up. You know, we all make mistakes and like take accountability, but now, you know, like, and there's tons of research to support this online. Mm -hmm. Um, people in like the Jewish community really speaking out about it and how it ties into anti-Semitism. So I don't care if it's like, not everybody talking about it, but there is definitely this parallel that aligns with these really alt-right movements. Yeah. Just crazy times. Please be careful. Stay safe out there. Stay safe. Spirituality can be weird. Um, yeah, not so much a hot take, but definitely like a red flag alert, everybody. I'll beware. <laughs> yeah. Um, spiritualists beware. Okay. So we're going to do, I know this is like kind of, we're doing back to back ghost host hotline stories. Like I said, 10 and I have just been like burnt out from doing research. So we just wanted to like chit chat, hang, hang with everybody. We're just hanging out, having, having a good time. Um, but we do have a ghost host hotline story. And I thought this kind of fit into the, you know, entity thing that I was talking about with spirit communication, because yes. a lot of people don't believe in trickster spirits and trickster spirits can be found in so many different cultures under mm-hmm. so many different names. Some of the deities and pantheons were considered tricksters and extremely cunning and like able to trick people. Right. Absolutely. So um, trickster, like, and like tricking is not like, if you look at different societies and different cultures throughout history, it's not always like these clowns just popping out and yes. like playing pranks. Like it's not like a court gesture. Like there are so many other aspects out there of like, why is, you know, Loki considered a trickster in the Norse pantheon? Like what, what makes it a trickster? Right. I would, I would even argue that each pantheon kind of has its own trickster in a sense. Like Hermes, I would consider one because he's super cunning and like he's always playing jokes. And like he is like kind of that energy of like teaching lessons and like doing things to other gods to like trick them almost. Yeah. I would hot take. I would argue that Hades himself is an extreme master of tricks because of tricking Persephone into the underworld. Mm-hmm. He's extremely cunning. And you know, Ted and I talked about this and people might not like to hear that, but I definitely feel like he has, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's just, they yeah. are cunning, you know, they are. And I think with Hades, it's interesting. Cause it's almost like contract based. And I'm basing this kind of thought process on, uh, Orpheus and Eurysity yeah. where Eurysity dies, Orpheus comes down, does his thing. And he's like, yeah, you can, you can leave with her and you can get her spirit back if you walk out and you do not look behind you. Like you have to have the trust in the gods. And then right before the edge, Mr. Looks around and then sees her getting yanked back down. So it's like cunning to the point where it's like, all right, I'll bet on, I'll bet on you. I'll put all my money on 21 and we'll see what happens. I think a lot of the Greek gods are kind of like cunning and trickstery in their own way. If you look at mythology and like, I think this is things that people forget Uh, where they do kind of cause chaos amongst human beings for no reason because they want to. And I'm not saying this is happening now to anybody, you know, like we get a lot of shit for the things that we say about the gods, but it's, it's written right there in mythology and it's maybe not so blatant in front of your face, but it's almost kind of like we can't fathom as human beings why they would do these things in a sense um, of like, why why are you guys doing this almost but they have their own rules in a sense and like even I say this to 10 all the time like 
we even like study like some of the heroes or those that were like highly favored by the gods and like study a lot of their mythology because we teach about it. And it's like, even if you were favored by a God, it didn't mean anything. I think you just kind of were more of like a chess piece because you were doing work on their behalf or like things like that. So it's very interesting. Like, I think it in each pantheon, it's kind of like, it's a double-edged sword. It is a double-edged sword. It's not even like the Greek gods. Like you can kind of take that and look at that with a lens through anything. Yeah. Of just who is doing what and why, and does it serve a greater purpose? Yeah. Or was it just for fun? (laughs) (laughs) Chalk that up. One for fun. (laughs) I don't really know. But yeah, that's why I think Greek mythology is so highly fascinating because the way that the Greeks viewed their gods is different compared to the way the gods viewed their people. And it it makes you look at things sometimes with a closer lens. That's why I have this hot take on Hades today, because it's like, he is Mr. Oath himself, but it's like, he did trick Persephone into the underworld. He, yeah. It's like, he was very cunning about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Were laws broken? No, but was it the correct way? no right like was it the most honest way to do things absolutely not but it's like you kind of just have to like look at it and you're like wow yeah no you this is brilliant this is brilliant work it's it's fantastic because it's like you have the favor but you're also fucked so it's like (laughs) do you want it or not step up to the plate ladies and gents no absolutely so um, maybe we will talk about tricksters in depth. Like I would love to do an episode on Loki and like why maybe he's kind of categorized as a trickster. And it's like a very interesting, is it a trickster? Or is he just super cunning? And like, is he able to wheel and deal things? And is he able to just kind of get things done in ways and does things that other gods wouldn't right to get to where he needs to go. And you know, what's fascinating about that? He'll wheel and deal, do whatever it takes, mm-hmm. make all the prophecies come true, you know, Ragnarok at the end, but it's interesting throughout mythology and the stories that he's in and stuff. And like, if he does something wrong, you know, cutting off someone's hair, for example, Mm -hmm. you know, he does something to make it right. He steals something. He gives it back. Like there is always a lesson. (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) It's always like he does it. And then it's like, Oh, okay. My bad. Here you go. And then, you know, at the end, you just have that weird horse thing, but you know, It's so funny. I've been getting a lot of questions about Loki lately um, in my inbox. And Ted and I do plan one day to maybe uh, look at some Norse Norse gods. I know we've been diving heavily into Greeks, um, but, you know, it's you kind of have to look at the gods with this other lens. And once you kind of like read the mythology, reread it again with like a different point of view. And that's why I love it, because you can pull something different from it every single time. You're like, wait a minute. That was brilliant. I cannot believe Hades tricked Persephone that way. Like that is genius but also like really wrong even though he had his permission he had his permission slips but it's like that's not one way to catch a woman no <laughs> that's crazy. no and then you know odysseus pissing off poseidon and on his way home and then like having like the wrath of poseidon chase him home and everything but he's favored by athena and then you know the man is like okay well we have to go past the sirens and he's like put beeswax in your ears uh gents on my boat we you can't hear them you'll go insane you'll jump and he's like but not me what you're gonna do hear me out is you're gonna tie me to the mast because I want to hear them (laughs) and whatever you do don't cut me loose like Odysseus is wild like literally (laughs) I will dive into the heroes one day to have like this insane confidence because he knew Athena was gonna back him that's what I'm saying it's like he just was like oh no no I have the favor of Athena so Y'all are not good, but I am. So tie me, tie me, tie me. I want to hear the song of the siren. (laughs) Like you almost kind of admire the delusion. It's like, that Mm -hmm. is why he has a myth written. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like this is why there are stories. (laughs) Man truly went out and fought God that day. (laughs) Get Yahweh on the phone. Okay. (laughs) Okay. We have to get to this Gosos hotline story. Um, But think about it for a second. You know what I mean? Like when people say there's not tricksters out there, I'm like, you probably are worshiping one. And it's, I'm not saying like these things are going to happen to other people. It's just gods are cunning in their own right. You know, like that's what they do when you look at other pantheons. And I think it's like my deconstruction of Catholicism that kicks in sometimes where I'm like, "Uh, hold up. They are not, they are not like all pious. Okay. (laughs) I'm going to say a hot tag, the big G upstairs, 
pretty cunning. Get pretty. Yahweh on the phone. He said Noah's Ark, this bitch. Pretty cunning, ladies and gents. Um, might I introduce you to Abraham and you know what yeah. he was gonna do to his son? No, it's so true. It's like God <laughs> came in and was like, ah, gotcha. But another hot take of mine is that some people have these one-sided views of deities because they haven't deconstructed from like religion and like myself included when I first started was like, oh yeah, great gods, this is fun. And it's like, you read their mythology and you're like, oh my God, that is a terrible thing that you would do. And I'm not trying to place my human standards upon you. I'm really not, but- Jesus out there just spreading the good word and Apollo out here uh, making people not believe his prophetesses uh, <laughs> prophecies. Yes. Love Apollo. Love him. But that that was the story. That was the story. So Jesus loved the people. Uh, Apollo's yeah. loved. Love turned Daphne into a tree. Like a hundred percent. Right. Um, so it is, it is interesting. And it is kind of like a little funny sometimes when you look at it from like the I, I implore people read Greek mythology and try to look at it from like a different lens, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Ghost's hotline story. <laughs> Hello. My name. Oh, I'm going to keep that blank. I, I like to keep things anonymous, but thank you. My for name sharing. is anonymous. <laughs> my name is Jason Bourne. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's Jason Bourne. Ooh, okay. Oh, we're funny today. I'm really having a good time. <laughs> Who are we? <laughs> I don't know. We've had a really rough week. So you know what? We just came on here and was like, let's just do some hot takes and make us feel better. <laughs> um, I have been watching your content for a while and have watched almost every episode. A little paranormal story for you guys. Trigger warning apparition. Well, thank you for your support and listening to us. We appreciate it. And I'm like, thank you for writing into the ghost host hotline. Yeah. Thanks for the trigger warning too. <clears throat> Seriously. Always appreciate a trigger warning. Oh my God. We had something wild come into our inbox the other day. Oh my God. It was in, like, I understand why people do this, but so someone reached out to us to help them with like a missing person's trigger murder. warning murder and included the whole story and was like all of the evidence. I'm not even kidding. Like we have screenshots of evidence it was, I was so beside myself. I kind of wish there was like a trigger warning and I wish I can help, but I don't do that kind of stuff. And it's like, oh, I'm not a scared me. This is not a true crime podcast. Like, I don't yeah. know what to do. Call the authorities. I've called the FBI like for fun and to ask a question, but like maybe get somebody serious. I have no idea. Yeah. And it was like truly terrifying. And I was like, oh my God, I really wish someone had trigger warning me because you just, oh, you know, when you open an email and it just pops up in your face. Wild. Yeah. And like me and Ten, she, the next day she was like, did you see that email in our inbox? And I was like, yes, yes, I did. I did. And I know exactly which email you're talking about because it's one that you just won't forget. But oh my God, I hope that all gets resolved. But anyway, thanks for the trigger warning was my point. <laughs> um, So before the story begins, I've been able to see spirits since I was little, sometimes actually in front of me with my eyes, which I've questioned medically before spiritually, which we love. Mm -hmm. um, I once woke up in the middle of the night to see a full apparition of my mom's face, but it was distorted and terrifying at the end of my bed. It lasted for not even a few seconds before a flash of light, which I believed was St. Michael. I, and I never saw it again. I gave St. Michael an offering and cleansed my room. It never spoke and never showed up again, but not sure what it was. Do you have any thoughts? Well, I got some thoughts. I have some thoughts. I also want to like disclaimer that we might have some thoughts, but it doesn't mean you should take our thoughts and like apply it to your actual life because these, like we get a lot of paranormal stories where people want us to like diagnose the situation. And I'm not just saying this because I'm a reader that would require me to actually do an investigation like mm -hmm. not even in your space, but like with your spiritual team to commune with them to get like what this was. So yeah. we can have thoughts, but it doesn't mean that it's like, yeah, what it is. no. And I think our thoughts are always like, well, here's an experience or something to back it up. And like, it could be, here's what the information and evidence that you've given us, here's the possible and probable paths that you can take moving forward. Yeah. And I think as like, because we are two people that do experience weird things and trickster spirits and negative entities and things that are unsavory because of our line of work, especially me who does paranormal investigations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we can, we do have the credentials to speak upon these things and kind of like bounce off each other what we think it is, but it doesn't mean it's correct. Yeah. So 
my first thought was that it definitely was like a trickster, like a some sort of like dangerous spirit that was like trying to be like something to scare you. Something to scare you, but at right? the same time, like something to like think about it this way. If something or someone knocks at your front door, wherever you are, and you say, Who is it? And it's Chelsea. And it sounds like her. So I'm going to open the door where it looks like her from the window. I'm going to open the door or she's in danger. Let me open the door. Correct. I hear Chelsea go 10. I need help. Open the door. I have a lot of heavy packages and I look outside and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to open the door. I have to help. Right. And it could be something trying to like get you to notice them. It could be, I mean, I've read so many different things on like mimics doppelgangers anything like that that like things out there that just learn and it's like take away the spiritual aspect take away like the fear of like the unknown and everything and it's like I like to put it in like the real world of like things that I do know about so like I think about animals and like what have animals done to you know adapt to their environment adapt to like predator prey kind of stuff and it's like octopuses octopi will uh, change color and mesh into the background of their environment mm-hmm. others like angler fish which live in complete darkness um have that little bulb of light to lure things close enough to them and if you want to know what that is just watch finding nemo but it's like these things animals creatures whatever you want to say out there learn and they evolve they have to adapt right so it could be something trying to be like oh this individual has a close relationship with their mom I know what their mom looks like or I know enough information to kind of like push it together and so that's going to let them open the door for me yes and I agree with you and this actually weirdly I don't think I I gave you the full story about this time because we've just like I said this week's just been weird and like having a rough week so I kind of forget to like update you on things Mm -hmm. so here's my live update I had a negative entity experience yesterday and it's been so long since I've had one I wait for these things to happen I'm like come on yeah you want to tussle let's Mm -hmm. go stand outside my wards bitch I'll send you to the ether I don't care I'm like that's just who I am now but one of them was trying to mimic what St. Michael looks like to me and it was extremely unsettling (sighs) it was I you guys know I can see um so I knew something was off like not in my space But like, I went outside to go throw the garbage out and I was like, you know, when you just feel like something is like staring at you, but it's not, and maybe, maybe a lot of people don't understand this if you don't like work with spirits often, but I just knew it was unsavory. Yeah. You're being watched and you don't like it. Yes. And I knew I was fine. I had my protection on, but I was like, something is like definitely weird out here. So I threw my garbage out and I went upstairs and I did. I'm not going to say specifically what I did, but I saw what was standing outside of my house. And it was like this, I see St. Michael in like this armor almost. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people do where he's like super big and powerful and has armor and things like that. Rightfully so, like his depiction almost. And it was trying to mimic what he looked like to let it inside of my house because it couldn't get in. And it was weird because I was doing a lot of work with St. Michael lately. I was doing evil eye readings and like calling him into my space often. And it was just so ugly that I just, I didn't know. I was like, is this thing actually kidding me? Because it didn't even look anything like how I see him. Like, I was like, you're a joke, basically. (laughs) You know, it was like throwing rocks at my window, essentially like, let me in. I'm St. Michael. Here I am. (laughs) And I actually had to call him in here to get rid of it because I was like, Listen, man, this thing's mimicking you. So <laughs> can you help me? Archangel Michael, we have a Fikel outside. We have a Fikel. A <laughs> Fark Fangel Fikel. <laughs> like a faint Fikel. <laughs> oh. But it's like, imagine if I was inexperienced in spirit communication mm. and it was trying to even give off. It was terrifying. The same energy that he gives off when he's in a space. And it yeah. makes that part correct. Interesting. So, cause I was like, oh, I kind of feel like it's Michael. Okay. Because I wasn't looking, but Correct, then I was yeah. like, something is weird about this, but mm-hmm. imagine if you're new no. into spirit communication no, and you're like, oh yeah, that's Michael. Come right on in. 
it was waiting outside to come into my house. No. Yeah. I can't, I wish I can draw it for you. It absolutely was terrifying. And it's like the worst part of having sight of like, I had to see it. And I was like, <gasps> I'm just a girl trying to water her squash. Get out of my house. Ooh, it's those things that like mimic and like you hear your name in like the woods or like something like that. Or you think you hear somebody that, you know, like asking for help or screaming. And it's just like, yeah. I, I need to just go inside and board up every sort of entrance. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was scary. So, um, I mean, like, I just didn't know where it got that huge presence of energy from. Cause like it was pulling a lot of energy. Like I was feeling the energy as I was walking and it felt like if any of you have called upon St. Michael, you know, I can't explain it, but if you know yeah. what I'm talking about, you know what that energy feels like. It's very distinct. Yes. It's very intense when you don't know him and it's very like overtakes a room almost. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is this thing? I had no, I've never seen it before in my life. Whew. Yeah. So. Uh, immediately. No, immediately pass. Oh yeah. Well, I, it's gone. I got rid of it. I had to cleanse like my space today. And I was like, I think it's just because I just had not kept up with my spiritual hygiene in the way that I should of redoing my protections, cleansing, like things kind of fell off track and like, mm -hmm. you know, that happens in life. But if I'm doing spirit communication every day, Chelsea, God damn it. You need to start doing your protection workings. Or asking for help. <laughs> God damn it, Chelsea. <laughs> no, it was fine. Like, couldn't get in my house. You know, I have all the shit set. You know, oh, yeah. I, I got booby traps out here. Good luck. You're Indiana Jones styling it out there. Yeah, fuck you. Like, you're not getting in my house. <laughs> I got a boulder waiting to drop on you on the exit. <laughs> yeah, good luck. You think you get past one thing? There's another, my guy. Good luck. Like, <laughs> they're just stupid. But it's like. How did you really think you were Fark Fangel Fickle? Like, <laughs> right? Who who do you think you are? But, but go ahead. To the listener out there, just do protections to to divination and just always take a second look. Take a deeper look, you know? Yeah, this was like a rare occurrence. Like this doesn't happen to me every day. Like this hasn't yeah. happened to me in years. Like I'm not saying like every day there's a negative entity outside my house. The way I talk about them, you would think that I like see them all the time. No, it's like, I was shook because I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen one of you guys in forever. I was, I've been waiting a damn minute. You're almost like, where you been? I've been waiting. Like, damn. where you been, loca? <laughs> it's almost twilight season, man. Okay, wait, it was raining yesterday and I was like, I was so sad. I was going to put twilight on and like eat Chinese food. And just sing. Ha, 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 ha. yeah when i told you i was watching twilight that was your reaction <laughs> that's the only reaction that and where have you been loca where, where have you been loca to the negative entity outside that's gonna be the meme for this podcast chelsea looks out her window negative entity where have you been loca <laughs> it's the only possible reaction truly <laughs> i know well listen it's not funny but i only hope that like we empower people of like you know, things are usually fixable. Like I never want to make spirit communication scary, but I also like to be very realistic. And I hope that like, you know, it's not a funny thing in the moment when you're like, holy shit, I let in Fark Fangel Feichel in my house, but you know, it can always, it can always be fixed. So don't worry. Yes. Don't worry. Everything is going to get fixed. Do not panic. No. You will pass go and you will collect $200. <laughs> I have to say, time before we end, this is probably one of my favorite episodes that we've done. Like we need to do more of this. It was just kind of like funny and like, Hot takes. I don't like seafood. Takes. <laughs> Why did you all lose your IQ when you step into the airport? <laughs> yeah, someone let us know. But um, that is it for today's episode here on Fix and Phones. Um, Fark Fangel Feichel, Felsey and Fen. We hope you have an amazing rest of your day. We'll see you next time on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye.